What is this thing and why is it here in Kerbal Space Program? Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is actually what NASA decided to put into orbit around Earth in 1960. This was a, a program called ECHO, specifically ECHO-1 and ECHO-2. And this was a huge balloon that was orbiting our planet for about nine years before it finally disappeared. Welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be talking about the ECHO program. And let's talk a little bit about this project ECHO. This was actually NASA's project and what we're going to do is use this spacecraft I have right here with uh, two cameras on it to try to uh, investigate the balloons that were launched by NASA from the outside and then we're also going to approach it with Jebediah Kerman just to see what the size of that thing was. Now so this was a passive communication satellite experiment which was basically meant to orbit around our planet and the uh, ground communication bases would then reflect and bounce off different signals from these uh, orbiting balloons and try to receive them at another location on Earth. Now there were two of these uh, spacecraft, I guess you can call them spacecraft, launched and the first one was uh, Echo 1A in 1960 and the second one was Echo 2 in 1964 and it was actually about 10 meters larger than Echo 1. Echo 1 was about 31 meters in diameter and Echo 2 was about 41 meters in diameter. And although here it doesn't really look like a balloon, it, it actually was a metallized balloon satellite and of course had a receiver, an antenna, and even uh, solar panels that were used to try to charge the battery. But by itself it didn't actually transceive anything, as a matter of fact it was only used to reflect signals from it and that's why it was so large. So all of the signals sent to this balloon were bounced off its surface and then returned to our planet. Now what's really interesting is that even though on the surface of our planet because of the size of the balloon we needed a lot of air, something like 20,000 kilograms of air actually to try to make it into a spherical shape, once they got into space you only needed about 2 kilograms of air to make it the same shape because obviously there's vacuum in space so you don't really need as much air to try to fill it up. And so because of that at launch this whole satellite uh, only weighed about 71 kilograms or about 160 pounds. And most of that weight was actually just the powder uh, necessary to create the air on the inside. The rest of the weight was obviously the solar panels and the little antenna attachment as well. And to prevent this uh, balloon from popping due to meteorite punctures or any other uh, possible collisions with micrometeorites, uh, there was a really interesting system on the inside where they've used a subliming crystals that would basically uh, try to cover up the holes that were created by micrometeorites. So as soon as a micrometeorite would be, uh, make a hole, this uh, mixture of ev evaporating liquid and uh, subliming solid would basically uh, cover up the hole from the inside and prevent the, the rest of the air from escaping. And the balloon itself was actually made out of a material called mylar, which was invented by NASA in uh, mid 50s. And this really interesting material is known for its strength, so it doesn't really uh, get ripped very easily. It's also relatively stable, it's transparent, but at the same time can reflect certain electromagnetic frequency, which is basically why they, they've used this material, because they wanted to reflect radio signals from the top of it. And it's also an excellent insulator, so uh, a lot of the space programs today use this material. And it's even been proposed to, to be used as a kind of a solar sail, because uh, what uh, one of the interesting discoveries during this mission was that due to the solar radiation, uh, both of the Echo 1 and Echo 2 balloons experienced a lot of propulsion from the sun. Basically they were essentially like solar sails. They were being pushed away by the solar flares and solar radiation into the outer space. But the main purpose for using this material in this particular uh, mission was to of course re redirect uh, any kind of transcontinental and intercontinental telephone, radio and television signals. So basically it would bounce off these signals and they would reflect from, from this particular sphere and then re return back to Earth in a different location. And what's really interesting is that because of its size and because of uh, the way that it would reflect light, uh, you could easily see Echo 1A from many different locations on Earth because it was large enough to be seen orbiting around our planet even if you were standing on the surface of our planet and not even using any telescopes or binoculars. And this was one of the reasons why this actually became known as a satelloon, basically a mixture of satellite and balloon. 
And what's unusual about the first Echo 1A mission was that uh, it actually survived for five years longer than it was supposed to. Originally, it was supposed to dip back into the atmosphere and burn in, in the atmosphere on uh, July of 1963, but it ended up staying in space for another five years. And this was most likely due to the solar sail effect from basically the material itself and uh, all kinds of solar radiation it received in space. But there was also another major difference between Echo 1 and Echo 2, and that was their orbit. Uh, Echo 1A was in an inclination of about 47 degrees, whereas Echo 2 was in a polar orbit, so it would basically orbit around Earth and pass by every single place on Earth, so you could technically see it from every country. And following the success of Echo 1 and Echo 2, NASA decided to put more of these uh, satellite balloons into space because uh, a lot of these passive communication satellites were quite successful. And it was uh, not until later years that NASA decided to actually implement active communication satellites where the satellite would uh, receive and then retransmit the telecommunication message and would basically then become the future of uh, space communication and obviously at some point lead to the discovery and the invention of radio satellites that we have today and that are responsible for things like cell phones, for example. But Echo Satellite also had a bit of a military purpose, and here specifically it was actually used to try to accurately pinpoint the location of Moscow, which is a little bit scary when you think about it. So obviously US military wanted to find a military use for it, and they were actually able to use the Echo Satellites for the astronomical reference point that was needed to try to accurately locate Moscow for their intercontinental ballistic missiles. But nevertheless, the main mission of these satellites was to try to find a way to transmit messages across our planet uh, relatively fast, relatively cheap, and without much loss of information in the process. And uh, in, in that sense, these uh, two satellites were actually very successful. So successful, in fact, that here is a little stamp from the United States that commemorated the so-called communication for peace, even though technically there was a bit of a military use here as well. But all in all, I think this was a pretty successful, pretty interesting mission and obviously served as a kind of an entrance into the super complex radio communication that we have today. And basically the idea of instant radio and TV communication across the planet came from these satellites. Basically, they gave us an idea of how to develop this further and how to create telephone, radio and TV signals that could travel across the planet. And anyway, I think that's all I'm going to say about this project. You can check out more about it in the link I posted in the description below. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to check out some of the other History of Space program videos I posted previously. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Also share it with people you think might like to learn more about space. Thank you so much for watching and game you later. See you in the next video. Bye bye.